Welcome everyone. Welcome to another YouTube session with me, Tamara Laporte from Willy Wing Arts. I haven't been around on my YouTube channel for a while. Boy, oh boy, has it been a very busy three months. This time of year always gets very busy for me with the Life Book Taster sessions and all sorts of things, prepping and and then of course homeschooling and life. But I made it! Hello! I'm back with another session for my YouTube channel. I'm excited. I'm excited. So I have laid out actually some paintings here because um, <laughs> those of you who've been following my channel will, will be asking, what have you been doing in your journal, Tam? Because you know how I am. Um, I run a series on my channel called Finish a Journal, and I think I started it about 6,000 years ago. <laughs> Kidding. I uh, <coughs> started it maybe, I don't know, three years ago, in an attempt to finish my journals. Uh, like, because I have a tendency not to finish my journals, I leave them kind of uh, half done, and uh, I set myself the challenge to finish a journal. Now, and I have, for the last three months, not had it, had it even, I think, I think I've done one extra page since I last showed you this journal, which is this one. And today we're going to do this one, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. So um, instead of um, showing you new journal pages, I thought I'd show you some of the artwork that I have been doing, because I have been doing art, but that's just been for lessons and for other other summits and things like that. So I haven't just basically have not had a chance to uh, work in my poor neglected journal. But I thought I'd show you, uh, I'll, I'll do a little flip through of it. and. I think, because I can't quite remember what... I think that this is the last one I did for Finish a Journal. Hold on. The Muted Palette one. This one, I think. Or it may have been the, the Hedgehog one. Hold on. The Hedgehog one is... And I did some. I, was, I went traveling. That's this one. And I went traveling. So I have actually done some artwork while we were traveling. So I want to show you a couple of the bits that were done in this journal. And then I wanted to show you some of the work I've been doing for lessons and things like that. Just to update you on where I'm at. And then um, also for today, I have been sent another upgrade box, which is this um, wonderful art supply subscription box by the lovely people at... Upgrade and I upgrade and I haven't opened it yet. I'm really excited to uh, open it, um, like unbox it while you're there with me. And then I'll be using some of these supplies in the art journal I'm going to be uh, art journal page I'm going to be doing today. All right. So it's an exciting session. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, so um, this is the sketch, and I'm going to talk to you about it in a second. So that we're going to do today. Uh, or I'm going to do today, and this I think is a new piece that I didn't film, and I really like it. And it's always a bit of a weird one because look, this is the page that is actually stuck to the cover, and it get, comes off. You see, it comes loose because you know yeah, you put water to it, so then I think the glue starts to dissolve. But anyway, it doesn't mind. I always find the first page a bit of a weird page because it's just a bit of an odd page. But I enjoyed working on that. Can't remember when I did it a while ago. <laughs> My life is a complete blur at the moment, everyone. Okay, so many of you who follow this channel will have seen this page before this spread before. This is one of the journals. I have three journals, or I, I think eventually I pared it down to two or one to say you must focus on this journal alone to finish it and not add any to it. Because guess what? Someone else, again, sent me two more of these journals. People out there are so wonderful. And um, because I sold these journals at some point because everyone wanted them and I, I um, bought them off the guys that sell them and then they stopped right they they discontinued this the best journal in the world which is so so sad so so very sad anywho so i have sold these journals to people where's my fluffy thing Here. so i sold these journals to people and one lovely lady said tam if you want them back i'm using a different journal so she has been so kind to send them back. So, for, for some reason, the universe, <laughs> the universe is still sending me these journals. But I haven't started in those two new ones yet because, right? I said I must finish this journal. Okay, so what I started doing, and actually I regret, I have to say, someone suggested, because you know, working on the left side of the page if you're right-handed, it's kind of not so, not always fun to do. And someone suggested, why don't you work upside down? And others, they saw another artist do that. And I thought, oh yeah, let's try that out. But now I regret it because I don't really like when you flip through the journal that you then have things that are upside down, you have to turn it around. But I have done that. Um, but I kind of regret it. You know, it's a personal choice. Some people don't mind. Um, anyway, so I did a sketch here. 
haven't done anything with it, didn't really like it. Still not fun, not so happy with this one either. This is not finished. Quite like this one. I think I did this one on when I was away. We went traveling for six weeks through Europe, which was awesome. And I think I started this one there. I quite like it. It's not quite finished, but I'm pretty happy with that one. Now here, <laughs> there's these semi sketches that are I tried to erase but didn't get erased very well. So again, an, an unfinished page. I tend to deal with these when I can't erase the um, graphite very well. I tend to work uh, with acrylics on these because it's quite hard to work with watercolor on these because the previous graphite will shine through. Okay, and that's a finished one. I like this. Is a now a couple of pages come that I they're all finished. Okay, look, see here I did it upside down. I did this one while we we're away on holiday and I really like this spread very much like it but I regret having done it upside down now I did it upside down because if you can see here there are some of these graphite stains are still in there and I couldn't quite get rid of it and it's frustrating to draw over over um, and draw and paint over where there's sort of graphite stains but you know I do really like the um, the spread we were driving through the the Pyrenees in Spain so I incorporated sort of forest imagery. I really liked how that came out. Okay, sketches again. I started doing upside down sketches. Didn't finish. Not finished. Not finished. And again an upside down sketch. <laughs> not still not finished. This I love so much. This is one of my favorite spreads ever by the way. This I've done for finish a journal before. You've seen me do this. This one. Yep, all nice. This was done for one taster session one year. This is a sketch that I've I still like, but I've just never felt the the kind of real call to paint. But at some point I will. I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. I think I put this one on. Did I put this one on YouTube? Maybe. Have a look around. So if you're new to the channel, have a look at my videos. There's lots of um, these kinds of spreads on my channel. This one I did for Finisher Journal at some point in Muted Tones. And here's an upside down one again. I really like this one though. I even used it as an inspiration for a taster session I did. So this is one of a, a journal spread that I really like. But it was done upside down, which I don't like. <laughs> okay, sketch that I could work on still. This was an older one, nice. This one also was done for a summit, I think. This one I don't really like so much. It's something not quite okay, something not quite finished for me. So I would work on that more. Then we did this one we did in on Finisher Journal as well. The prompt was oh no, I combined Finisher Journal with the the challenge people voted for Hedgehog, I think. I, I posted a challenge to my newsletter subscribers, which was fun. And they had to choose a topic out of four or five options, and they chose Hedgehog. Then this is one of my favorite pages as well. I really like this. This one is on the channel if you're looking to see how this was most painted. Have a look. This one is also on the channel. This one was for Woman Unleashed. It's an angel. This one was a life on Lifebook, which is not finished. I did it. See, that's the blue. Never mind, that's okay. Not too bad. It's not finished, but I quite liked it. This is a wintry kind of girl, very different color scheme, as you can see, and done in acrylics. I just wanted something different. And that's the end. It's the end. This is um, the back of the book, and I quite like this, but it still is unfinished. I feel it needs more. I feel this needs to be filled up one way or another. Okay, so so I've done some pieces, uh, well, not on a holiday, about three or something, didn't I? But that is about everything. That was in the summer, and that is about everything I've done in a journal. I haven't worked in journals much at all in the last three to six months even. However, I have worked on my on single sheets, which is my go-to format if I don't work in a journal. And I just wanted to show you some of these as well, so you can see sort of a squeaky chair. <laughs> Just so you can see what I've been working on. So this is this I literally did this two or three days ago, and I really love how it came out. What we're going to do today as well is something similar, not similar to this, but I have recently been kind of obsessed again with uh, Gustav Klimt's uh, decorative patterned elements that he put in his paintings, and so I've been trying to. 
uh, make art inspired by Klimt, but obviously mix it in with my own kind of style. So if you came, if you if you were on the Kaleidoscope Taster sessions, which ran in August, no July, you may recall that I made this piece of art, which is uh, inspired by Gustav Klimt, and all the little patterning start. This is actually very mild for a Gustav uh, for a Klimt inspired sort of patterned thing um but uh i, I kind of got the bug and i was like oh i want to do more detail i want to do more storytelling with not just the faces but also the background and patterns and things like that so lately i've been um doing that as you can see here the coat has got a lot of patterns in it and a little bit in the hair and things like that and uh, for lifebook 2022 this year we're also doing this piece of art this is a lesson for lifebook and as you can see here i brought in a lot of uh, autumnal decorative uh, elements but um, also added these sort of yeah abstract shapes and patterns reminiscent of the kind of Klimt-esque uh, style and then the other thing is like for instance I don't really do a lot of I do do a lot of doodles as many of you are familiar with my work will know that I like adding little doodles to things but I don't I'm not the kind of person that will sit uh, down and do intricate really detailed work and I'm kind of feeling called to try and do that more so here on this collar I was trying to do some like almost like um, patterning that was reminiscent of embroidery now this is actually quite rough and not very I did, I'm still someone who used to uh, when I um, uh, in my 20s I used to despise having to do super tiny detailed stuff and when a teacher once told me that Rembrandt and the old masters used to paint tiny details with one strand of hair. I used to almost have a panic attack just <laughs> thinking I would never have the patience for that. My idiot Steve Brain could never. However, I also really enjoy doing a lot of repetitive detailed stuff as that can be so meditative. So I have just been recently feeling called to do more with backgrounds and patterning and... Um, yeah, utilizing patterns and background to enhance more of the storytelling. Because of course, I love the face, and but I do a lot of my work is fo face focused or animal focused, and less so on the background and storytelling of the other parts of the painting. So it's an exciting time to try and bring that in. So this is one that we did for life. What we're doing for life. The lesson goes live today, and this is another version of that. So I painted this painting, and the interesting thing as well, I posted this on my Facebook page to say. Um, that even though this is almost an identical painting, there are subtle differences that make these two paintings still really quite different, like the facial expressions are different, the skin tone color I used. There is a bright kind of cooler yellow in this one, a warmer yellow in this, and I didn't use the cool yellow in this, these kinds of things. Anyway, this one inspired that one, and I did that one for our lesson because people loved it so much. So if you're interested in these kinds of lessons, by the way, you can join. You can still join Lifehook 22. However, we are now focusing or we're selling Lifehook 2023 as well. So just check the description, the description below, if you're interested in joining any of my classes. I've got information down below, including for Kaleidoscope or general classes, Lifehook 22, 22 and 23. You can join them all if you want to. This was done. Little feathers for uh, the taster sessions for Lifehook 23. This, I love this so much. Lately, that's another thing I've been become more interested in doing slightly more real, slightly more realistic. I say slightly because this is still not super realistic. More realistic animals. Um, this is a quirky animal, but let me show you the other animals that I've done. So look, for instance, this one, like kind of a realistic, more, more realistic looking owl that's very expressive. Here I combined watercolor paint with acrylic inks. That's a beautiful, wonderful combination, by the way. And I want to do something like this. Uh, I'm going to be doing... I, I'm, I'm thinking of creating a little mini-series of classes for these expressive animals. Expressive um, portraits of uh, animals in watercolour. I did this one as well that I love. It's not really finished, but I don't know what to do else with it. But it's nice, though. So, like, really playing with the fur and bringing in some abstract elements in. But still, it's quite a realistic sort of looking hair. And then I did this fox as well that I also love. By the way, if you're interested in buying any of these paintings, these are for sale, although I haven't listed them yet, so uh, do just email me on tam at willowing.org if there's anything you see <coughs> that you like. I, I always forget to advertise my paintings for sale, but they are for sale. So these animals here were a series that I want to, I'm going to make them into a mini course where 
We're doing these beautiful, I love this deer, it's one of my favourite paintings of all time that I've ever made. I was really obsessed, and still am, this, with this colour combination, orange with kind of purple, it's really beautiful. So those are new, and then this cutie guy was for my recent taster sessions of um, for Lifebook 2023. I love him so much. This one, uh, this is actually available on the channel as well. This one was done for Woman Unleashed, beautiful colourful watercolour. Uh, portrait of an elephant. This one was done for the kaleidoscope taster sessions. If you were on those, it's such a cute guy or her. And this one, like I just said, uh, was also for the taster sessions this year. This year for Lifebook Twenty Three. This was inspired by that one, by that one um, journal page that I did while I was away. And then we did some more feathers. This was a feather for over here and a feather for for the taster sessions and this, this is another example of the animals that I'm doing in watercolour, watercolour portraits of animals. So it's just a small amount of snippets of art that I've made recently. There's actually more but I didn't want to uh, bring them all out because we might be sitting here for quite some time. This here I think, this, I love this one so much. This owl. Anyway, so that's what I've been up to. <laughs> I hope you are um, well and that you're also having a lot of, well, a lot of creative time and self-care time available in this crazy world of ours that is still um, going through something. <laughs> um, yeah, so I send you lots of love and uh, uh, if you're going through anything and if you're struggling in the world, because it's, it's definitely not an easy time to be alive today. And I do recommend finding... Uh, if you can, finding some self-care space and time to do things like making art or having a hobby, it doesn't have to be art, gardening, just meditating, uh, knitting, cooking, anything that inspires you to relax and be calm and just stay uh, in the moment with yourself. And art is really great. So I do recommend art if it's uh, something you're interested in. We are we have um, uh, Lifebook 2023s open for registration at the moment. So if you are interested in joining me and another 30 people on um, a creative journey of a lifetime, <laughs> then do come and join us. We're currently running uh, an early bird discount code. A whole year long course off with 30% off. Uh, the code is loveart30 and the links and information is in the description below. So maybe I'll see some of you there. I would love, love that. And now, ooh, exciting. It's like a present. I have to say, so this is my second upgrade box that they sent me. Very kind. And the last one I was sent, first of all, people said that mine was incomplete. So it was a bit bashed up. So I wonder if maybe it got opened or something, whatever. But basically I didn't get all the all the stuff last time. But I, I from that box, I absolutely adored the pen, this p pilot pen that they included. And so I bought more of them. And I'm not affiliated um, with, the, with, with anything or anyone. Um, so I'm not getting any, uh, what is it, uh, commissions or anything. So uh, I just loved that this was such a fine nibbed pen and I was looking for one for a while. So I bought more of these. So what I like about these um, subscription boxes is that you really discover supplies that you wouldn't necessarily uh, discover otherwise, I think. So let's see what's in it, yes? And then we'll talk about the art piece I'm going to create. So upgrade number 33. So they've got these different boxes and each box has their own... A lot of art supplies in them with a little booklet as I understand. Look at what I like about their boxes. Like it's got little eyes. <laughs> oh, and then you need to do this. Oh, I'm gonna rip that up. Oh, see, I haven't opened it yet. Oh wow. Okay, and now we open the box. It's very exciting. Ta da! Okay. So inside is a little package with art supplies and the little booklet. And see, that's what was missing apparently last time. There are some stickers and things and paper in there as well. How cool is this? Whew. See, that was all missing from my box last time. So let's, let's take this all out. And what I enjoy is this box as well. Look, you have to say that this is uplifting. Have fun, viel Spaß, which is German for fail and fail plaisir. This is Dutch, uh, French, in all the languages. This tells you to have fun. Well, we need to hear that, don't we? That's really cool. Um, I wonder what is that Russian and that's Sinhala, maybe? No, that's. Uh, Chinese, Mandarin. Anyway, I don't know. But um, it's nice to be wished a good, having fun in all the languages that are out there. I like it. Okay, so this is the box. Um, let's wait with the opening th this part. We're going to just have a look at these papers. And I think, as I understand it, in the book, they actually explain in here. So it comes with a booklet, and the booklet tells you what you've um, got. So you, you, I think you're actually... 
uh, so it's information about art. Watercolour dots, oh, they seem cool. I don't know if they're in here today. So I'm wondering if if uh, what what is in the book is all in there. I think so, because I've seen other people do unboxings of these and then um, what's in here is actually described in the book I think but let me let's let us open I'm not gonna go through the entire book so I think this is the featured artist and you get stickers that's cool by um, Tan Tani Tan Tani is the name of the artist this is lovely so you have you get a bit you get a bit of art with it that you can use for inspiration or hang up in your house very nice and then you get some paper here as well and this is all cold pressed paper I don't know if these are three different pieces or they're all of the same. They feel heavier. Yeah, this feels heavier than this. Oh, no, than this. Yes. No, yes. It's a little different. I'm not sure if they're different. These look the same and this one looks a little different. So I could do, I could try and paint a little bit on here. I will say straight away that I am not a fan of cold press. I'm more of a, um, I'm more of a hot pressed person. I prefer hot pressed. So, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, I do a little bit actually, that's not entirely true. I had one journal where there's a little bit cold pressed in there with my art, my abstract journal. But mostly I prefer hot pressed, but I can try it out. And then let's see what sort of supplies we're getting in this box. Ooh, nice. Oh, we do get the watercolor dots, you see. So what is in the booklet? Oh, I love it. And I'm really up for so that is very cool. So these are watercolor dots, I think. Are they? Because that's what we just saw in the book. Yeah. Oh, look at that. How cool is this? So these are little amounts of watercolor that I assume you can kind of take with you as you go. And on the back of the card, it says what the names are. So the green is Cosmic Wave, Moon Dust, Atlantis, Raw Gold. Osiris Red. Art is my drug edition. That looks like a nice gold. These are look like uh, they are metallic-y shimmer. So these are kind of handy to take with you on holiday or when you're busy, yeah? Very cool. And then these, um, Van Gogh or Van Gogh, how we say it in Dutch, watercolors. I have never tried them. And Indian yellow. This is going to be awesome. You know why? Because I want to do this girl with mostly yellowy orange, warm orange. No, sorry, warm yellow. Because I'm doing a, um, you know, we're doing a um, Klimt inspired piece. So that's handy. And this is a necrodome purple red. I'm going to try them. Here we're getting some ink, some Indian ink, which is awesome. I like Indian ink. I've got a whole bottle of Indian ink, so I don't need this, but Indian ink is very, you know, and handy again, because I want to do black hair, so I can do the Indian ink with black hair today. And then it comes with this beautiful brush by, I don't know, oh, I do know the name, uh, Leonard, is the brand, is it Leonard? La Vise Vauve, 100 RO, and number zero, whatever that is. And a beautiful uh, watercolor brush, synthetic that you can fill. This is, these brushes are great because you can take them out and about and fill them with water here and then you don't have to worry about um, carrying water with you and then if you, this is new, I haven't seen this before, look I have loads of these in different, in different brands but look they are interestingly what this brand seemed to do is that keeps the water in a kind of segment compartment here and I think I wonder, I don't know if this is correct, that it sort of stops the water and then you push it to to come into this section, I don't know, because on these, these are by Pentel, I think. Yeah, Pentel, you just press the water. Anyway, so this is interesting. I don't know what brand this is. It doesn't say the brand on the on the thing, on the actual item, but it will be in the book. So now I understand how this works. This is all in German. I, do, I speak a tiny bit of bisschen of German. But I can't understand that, so... The book is in both English and German. Right, so let's see the brush then. So we can have a quick look at the brush, what brand it is. Because it doesn't give us... Oh, here we go. Water tank brush. This upgrade water tank brush is unlike any other. You can fill it by holding the tip into the water and squeezing the handle, which will suck the water into the tank. Yeah, save yourself the hassle of unscrewing and filling at the tap and continue painting straight away. What do you mean? Oh, you don't have to do it the other way. Oh, 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 
Oh, look, look, look. Sorry, I didn't realize this. It's a syringe. <laughs> it works like a syringe. Sort of. Okay. What? How do we get the water in then? You just do this. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, what is the brand? Oh, it's by Upgrade. It's by them. Okay, you need the question. Do I need to put the name on Upgrade or whatever so that we know? Interesting. Mm, this is called a drawing ink, but it's just Indian ink, yeah. These inks are made from high quality dyes bonded with shellac. The latter are very colourful. That's the other interesting thing is this this they give you a lot of interesting information about it. The latter are very colourful, intensive, and are particularly suitable for colourful, expressive works. All winds are renewed and drawing inks are water resistant. White, Indian, black, and gold are pigmented and light fast. All 25 colours in this range can be used with brushes and dip pens and are loved by designers, art artists, and illustrators. I've got quite a few of these. Um, and I've got, like I said, a big pot of Indian ink. I don't know who you buy. Let's see what my Indian ink is. Talent. Yeah, talents. I've got this one. Also good. <coughs> Very good. Okay. So, and then here, I'm definitely going to open this one up. And I'm going to add them to my existing... I don't know. I need another... I need a newer... Um, <laughs> like my... Um, I had a new one. I don't know if there's space for, for more. There might be. This is my Schminker, Schminker and Daniel Smith. I can't. I could try and put them in the middle here. Don't they fit? Do they fit there? Not really. It's a shame. I might put them in there for now. Okay, so I will be playing around with these brushes. I'm gonna actually. I'll be using quite a lot, and I will use a bit of this yellow. Oh, this yellow and this yellow. So the the dots are interesting. I like the little box as well. The dots are interesting. I might use this blue. What is this blue? This is like an indigo type blue moon dust. That might work. What is the little one? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they haven't actually listed all the colors on the back. You get. I got two, seven. I got an extra. Let's just see how we go. We're going to put them there. And then I might be able to put these two in there as well. And then get started on my painting. Okay, before we're going to start on this, I want to make sure that I make a note of the numbers and the name of these colours because I know me, and if I don't do it now, I'll forget and then I'll go, oh no, yeah, that was by Van Gogh, Van Gogh, but I don't know what the number was, so on my colour palette, my colour charts, these are all the ones I've, um, that I've frequently used, I'm going to add on here as well, so I'm going to add, I'm going to try this yellow, I'm going to add this in on my colour chart so that I know what it is. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very bright, bright warm yellow, which will come in so handy. It's such a funny coincidence that I'm, I really didn't know what I was going to get. And then this one is a Crenacridon purple red. That's going to be nice because those are my colours that I love. It's beautiful. Oh. Now, look at that. This is like a red violet, yeah? That I love. Here's the red violets uh, that I love there. And that's a very similar colour, but it's very beautiful and bright in pigmentation. So let's put our numbers under it and also say what uh, the brand is. So this is Van Gogh Van Gogh. I can do it in tiny. And then the numbers are, the yellow is 224, no, 244, sorry, there's my little doggy there, and 592. Okay, so that's a beautiful colour. Let's see how they dry, because of course when you, with watercolour, when you apply them, they always look amazing, and then they dry a little faded, that's normal. Um, but it reminds me very much of the Schmincke 940, which is one of my favourite colours, although this is a bit more, no, oh yeah, very similar. And then that one is that you have the new Gamboji and the Daniel Smith. This color is a 213 in the Schmincke, it exists. But you know, and they all have, you know, they're all very good brands and they all do really, really beautiful colors. But I'm intrigued because I have not used a Van Gogh brand before. I'm a Schmincke, Daniel Smith person. So I'm excited to try these out and they will come in very handy for my artwork today. Um, 
I could maybe also do this one on here, but these are I get so so little of them at the moment that I'm not sure yet if I want to do do them on my uh this is the thing is though what I do like is that looks like it's fluorescent. So let's have a quick look at the um, watercolor dots. Let's read them and let's read about them in here. I'll get let this dry. So the watercolor dots are by who? But other but also by brand Scrim. The brand is Scrim watercolor dots. Okay, Cosmic Wave. Okay, these are the names. Pacific Blue. Make sure to let the color work on your brush until the water has dissolved the pigments, then your result will be more opaque and luminous. So they are. Okay, cool. So, I like the look of this one, the very bright orange one. I'm wondering if it's fluorescent even. So, a quick try. Yeah, it's very, very bright. I don't know if it's fluorescent, it's similar to sort of a th that the 349 in the Schmincke, but I enjoy the vibrancy of the of this colour. Let's have a look. So shimmery, I am not a big shimmer fan in paints. I don't know what it is, I just don't, it doesn't really work for me. Some I do like it a little bit. Um, the problem with it is often, is this hard, this one is hard to, oh it's coming, it's coming. Here we go. I don't know if you pick up on the shimmer. I don't know, it doesn't always... The shimmer... Here, it's kind of nice. Does it, do you see the shimmer of it or not? Well, I need to kind of... Hold on. Let me just activate it better. Shimmer can be very beautiful in person, I suppose, but it, it's hard to capture on photos or on screen... Uh, screen... Scanners. So I'm not a big fan of the shimmer, but I do like the other colours. Let's see what that dark blue one is. The dark blue one looks nice, like an in indigo sort of colour. These are very vi vibrant. Look how... Oh, what? This is a turquoise -y. Wow, very nice. That's beautiful. That's, that's one of my faves. And let's see what that little one is. That little black one, if that's more of a indigo. Or, oh, this also, I think... Essentially shimmery. See shimmer, I just find it hard to activate them as well. I'm not a big fan of shimmer. Look, it just it's very hard to get them to the shimmer itself. Today. That looks similar to the other one. Maybe the gold will be nice. Because the gold the shimmer is needed often in the gold, right? And I like it when it's I do gold and shimmer in acrylics is easier to kind of work. Uh, that's not bad. Yeah, that's nicer. Certain colors are just harder to get the shimmer to really be really obvious, but it's not bad, this one. But that color is... Mm, oh, mama, here we go. Here, now the, now the pigment is a bit more intense, you see. So I'll use some of this in the painting today, because I need gold in that as well. All right, so let's get started on... Um, I'll talk about the girl that I'm drawing today, and then we'll get started. Okay, so I wanted today to paint a winter girl, but with uh, in a in a kind of Klimti esque Art Nouveau style, with um, kind of a, a kind of a snowy, wintry background, and uh, a lot of sort of these, like I said, these kind of uh, patterns. And if you're not familiar with Klimt, have a look, look him up. He had these really beautiful makes really beautiful paintings with a lot of ornate sort of decorative um, patterns on, on, on some of the clothing and some of the background and things like that. So I wanted to do a girl that sort of covered this as she's wearing this oversized, much similar to the other big paint painting I made, an oversized winter coat with lots of flowing hair, black hair, and um, intricate details on her coat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm really, like I said previously, enjoying working on working on doing a bit more storytelling with clothing, with patterning, with background, etc. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to time-lapse the rest of this part, but I'll do a voiceover um, uh, over the time-lapse and uh, see if you enjoy it. So I'll be using today for this, I'll be working in sort of uh, with blues and maybe a few blues, beiges and whites and then yellow oranges and then black. 
uh, a bit of red here and there maybe. Um, and then I'll be using, like I just mentioned, uh, the some of the supplies from Upgrade. The, I'll be using the I'll try out this brush and this brush as well, and then the ink, the India ink, and some of this, these dots as well. It'll be quite interesting. So a lot of the stuff that they've provided today is actually of comes of great use to me here today. And then also I'll be working with some of the norm, the, my usual watercolor schminke uh, set as well. All right. Well, enjoy this session and. Um, uh, if you are making anything in response to this, I'd love to see it. Um, in the description below, there is uh, my social media links. I run a Facebook group or several Facebook groups on Facebook. I'd love to see your artwork there. Um, I'm also on TikTok and obviously here on YouTube and Instagram. So do follow me in all the other places. And if you do want to learn with me, please consider joining any of my classes. Um, that way you support me as an artist and I'm deeply, deeply gra grateful if you do. So the new stuff that's coming up is Lifebook 2023 and uh, you can still join Kaleidoscope, which is an in-depth color theory course, as well as Lifebook 2022 if you're interested in that too. Okay, enjoy the rest of the show, I was going to say, haha, <laughs> rest of the video, and I will see you again soon. Well, hello, so here is um, voiceover time, and, uh, well, I'm adjusting my lighting here, aren't I? <laughs> so, we're going to start off with doing the face, and I'm using this new brush here, and I remember it feeling quite soft, and I'm always looking for a slightly intermediate, not super firm, not very soft. So I did like this brush, but you can see that I switched to the other one because I wanted something slightly firmer. And I think it's a pre pre personal prefer preference, really, um, you know, with regards to like sort of hardness and softness of brushes. Um, but I did like the other one, and I think it's very good for if you're doing sort of more watercolor, larger pieces, perhaps. Perhaps, but for the smaller details that I was doing, that the um, the 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 firmer brush was a little more um, a, appropriate, and I really did like this brush. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of working a bit wet. I'm working wet and wet, and I'm adding a little bit of shading already. Now this is um, quite a small face for my doing. Normally, the faces I mentioned before is a is a very kind of um, is a focal point and I do large faces. So in this phase I'm going to do only, like I'm not going to do sort of very detailed shading, but I will do some. And what you see me do here is I sometimes like to mix my watercolor layer with a little bit of acrylics just to smooth some of the blotches out of those if it's a little bit blotchy. But also I like to, I wanted to make it slightly lighter because the initial layer was fairly dark for my liking of what I was trying to achieve. So here I think I mixed, even that acrylics I wanted lighter. So I think I mixed it with um, some white acrylics as well. And that's just a base layer. And then I'm going to build up layers in just a moment with um, darker shades, as you'll see. Oh, well, I said that, and now I'm actually doing um, highlights first, or I'll make it lighter still. And it's also always funny looking, doing the voiceover afterwards and not quite remembering what steps you took. So it's always a nice surprise for myself to watch this back. So I did a bit of highlights, a couple of highlights there, and then started bringing in some beautiful colors there, a little bit of a redness. Um, don't be scared. It always looks very vibrant when you first apply it. Some people are like, why are you doing that? But it fades. You'll see it fades to a nice light tinge, light, light, light red, light pink. Now, painting with watercolor over acrylics is a little tricky. I don't, um, normally do it that much. It can work, but you have to remember that acrylics is sort of a layer of plastic. It is porous though. It will absorb other layers of other paints, other mediums, but not as in a, in a, it will do that in a different way than a paper does. So just you just need to know that 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 it does that, um, and get used to it. Uh, okay, so here I'm adding some shading, a little bit of a grayish color for shading. I don't think I actually like this color a lot. Later on, I I'm, I muted back a little bit, but not bad. It's just to bring in a little bit of shading and just give a bit of shape to this, to the face to start off with. And then I decide uh, to let that dry for a little bit. And then here I'm using that Van Gogh Van Gogh um, yellow. What's, what's it called again? A warm yellow, yeah, some kind of warm yellow, 244 or something, the number. And I'm applying it to 
basically the coat and the hair at this point because I'm going to go over the hair eventually will be black and it's just easier to go over it later on. It doesn't matter if there's yellow under it. It just makes the, the whole process of applying this a little easier. And this is exactly the kind of yellow that I had hoped for, as I mentioned before. And it's a beautiful kind of warm, warmish yellow in that kind of um, same sort of color scheme that Klimt often uses, although he uses more of a kind of almost like a brownie ochre. But you, that, that um, you'll see in a moment that I actually bring that in a bit later, the ochre and the browns. Okay, so I'm working on the face a little bit more. I, I decided to give her some blue eyes. Uh, no particular reason, just went with that. I can't remember which blue this is. I think this may have been one of the dots, actually. The watercolor dots. And here I'm working with this pilot pen this is a very fine nibbed one i need the fine nibbed very fine nibbed ones when i do, <coughs> excuse me when i do small small details like this this is a small face for me so i'm using a fine nibbed pen to to do some line work here and add some details in and i kind of apply my lines in a sketchy way not in a sort of really strong uninterrupted line but more in that kind of sketchy way that gives it a bit more of that illustrator feel and here you go yes so the face is kind of shaping up a bit a little bit uh, but it's nowhere near done yet so here I'm using uh, this is actually a pastel pencil pastel pencil um, basically, I'm, I'm starting to grab some pencils to try and bring some detail in. I grabbed that pastel pencil, then decided I didn't like it so much. Then I think I'm using some other pencils in a moment as well. But here I'm adding some detail to the mouth with, I think it was that same pilot pen again. And here I was attempting <laughs> to do add some white, white highlights on the mouth and on the chin and on the nose. So we're doing some highlights here. Uh, with a Posca pen and an, and an Artistro or Art, Artistro pen. I don't know how that, what the pronunciation is. I kept saying Artistro and then I heard someone else say Artistro. So, not sure. All right, here we go. Here I'm adding. So there's a little bit of fur on this coat. Uh, suggestion of fur, I suppose. And uh, this is like an ochre color mixed with a bit of a brown, chestnutty brown. This is from my Schminke set. And again, I was kind of going for that sh for that Klimt color scheme that is sort of like, yeah, an orangey, browny, reddish color. So I mixed ochre with a chestnut type brown and made this color. And I'm kind of applying it in between the hair strands where I am expecting there not to be any hair. But uh, that changes later as well. So it's sort of, again, it's just suggestive and adding this to certain areas, not others. And you can see on the sketch there that I've already added these little um, swirls and patterns, and I'm going to be enhancing them in just a moment once these, these layers have dried. Yeah. So she's quite regal. I like her pose, how she's sort of so regally standing there with her her beautiful big coat and her hair, and then this kind of interesting little hat thing. <laughs> snowy, snowy hat, snow, snowy something. <laughs> All right, so now start. Now do I start with a dried out white white Fosca pen? <laughs> okay, I find a good one. Uh, I'm starting to add these little details, and this is a very Again, meditative but long-winded process, and you need to have the patience for it. And like I said previously, you know, for for some people, this might just not be as tedious as it could be to others. So for me, doing tiny details for years was really something that I found very tedious and frustrating. But more and more do I really value the effect that small details can have on a painting and patterning and the, how it enhances the storytelling. So I'm kind of really wanting to spend more time doing these sorts of things and playing around with it and seeing how does it work, where does it work, you know, compositionally, how, when, when does it overwhelm a painting, when doesn't it, you know, these sorts of things. I've been really experimenting with this and uh, using kind of the Art Nouveau movement, but mostly Klimt as inspiration and really learning from from uh, just looking at these paintings and what he did. Um, it's very, very interesting. 
So yeah, so I'm spending some time here to start, and I'm starting off with just adding all these little details in white, but to then enhance the details in a moment, you'll see me add um, kind of little shadows behind the the swirls with pencil. And uh, I don't know, it's that's that that's not something I've seen Klimt actually do. But I again, I'm just sort of playing around with what happens if I add shadow to this. Is it going to feel like embroidery? I don't know what it will do. And I'm kind of pat like embroidery or lace or basically clothing that has all sorts of stuff on it. And I've, I've been thinking, see how, see there that it really looks like a shadow there, as if it's ridges. So when you add a darker line there, it feels like these could be ridges or maybe stitches. I don't know. I'm playing and trying and playing and trying. And I think I do, later on, I do a third layer as well, or a third line in a similar or even darker color, maybe? I can't remember. We'll see in just a moment after the break. No, I'm kidding. No breaks. No commercial breaks. That's nice, you see. I enjoy this. And it's, like I said, I don't think Klimt did this. And that's a little comment on style, by the way. So if you're developing your style, what is really great about being inspired by other artists is that you can take a certain idea or a certain something from someone's style, but then you start adding to it. And that's how you, you know, you use inspiration or you use particular elements from somewhere, from an artist, or it doesn't have to be art. It could be, it could be anything, nature, whatever. And then you add to it your own kind of ideas or little details. And then it turns, it turns transforms metamorphoses into something that is really your own as well. Okay, so here I'm using that same pencil to kind of uh, give the impression of fur, like it's a fur c collar around her or a hood or something. Um, I'm using another couple of pencils here to deepen or give variety to the fur. And again, fur is quite... Um, uh, can be quite tedious to do if you have to repeat lots and lots of lines. So you have to be kind of up for doing the tedious sort of line work. But I'm more and more and more kind of inviting myself <laughs> to just give that a go, you know? Because again, I'm usually uh, can be a bit put off by having to do a lot of detail. But yeah, I, I really... Okay, here you go. That's what I meant earlier, where I did the darker and a third darker line to kind of enhance these crevices or whatever these are, patterns, ridges, even more. Okay, and then more of the swirly whirlies and the lines. And it is very nice to do. That There's a lovely meditativeness. When people that do zentangling will relate to this. So zentangle, if you're not familiar, is a, a type of doodling where you connect up lots of little patterns and shapes, uh, just in black pen usually, and you can color it a little bit. But people that do that also do a lot of small detail work. And that's the whole point of it. That's the only point of it, in fact. And uh, it can be the point of that as well is to make nice patterns, but also to relax, you know, to get into a flow state of some kind and uh, lower the blood pressure and the cortisol levels, I suppose, which I think is what we really need right now in the world, don't we, with everything that's going on. We could probably do with um, lowering our stress levels and our cortisol and, uh, cortisol levels for sure. So yeah, so I do enjoy, for that reason, I do enjoy this kind of patterning and re repetitive pattern making. I recommend you try it out, see what you think. And in contrast to, you know, like I say, um, uh, a painting that contains sort of faces with, in contrast, uh, contrasted with patterning or interesting backgrounds or something, I really like it. I'm, and I'm enjoying just experimenting at the moment. Right, so let's use some more of these um, watercolor dots and that blue that I gasped over earlier what was going to be kind of perfect for the background for the kind of his suggestion of mountains and trees. Um, I'm not, I'm kind of, kind of not doing a lot of detail on these um, mountain, sorry, mountains, trees more like I think. I'm kind of uh, going to kind of do intricate stuff, um, but we'll give suggestions of dark kind of foresty trees in the background, give it that real kind of moody um, landscape feel because it's meant to be a snowy landscape, uh, which we're going to kind of 
represent oh yeah by doing a kind of an an odd colored sky <laughs> kind of the gray beige type of sky where it's sort of heavy with snow i miss snow whenever i get to winter in england i'm like please let it snow please let it snow in that song let it snow let it snow let it snow i used to grow up in holland and uh we had snow pretty much every winter and i enjoyed it a lot as a kid and of course due to global warming or whatever is going on at the moment there is no more snow not much snow at all in england or holland and i miss it and i always really crave snow every year i think i must go to like finland or norway on holiday for um for a snow holiday or something that would be so cool so anyway instead for now i have to make do with um, painting snowy sceneries. <laughs> and so this color in the background is a bit of a beigey uh, color that I mixed with a titanium buff, titan buff, which is an off-white, beige. And soon when we put a little uh, white f um, sparkles in the background, it'll feel like snow. Now here I'm adding another bit of bit of shading, and this is a kind of a grayish green. And I know that I wasn't that happy about that color. I think I muted a little bit in just a moment. I, I kind of didn't really find my happy color today with when it came to shading. Oh yeah, I see. I'm going over it with this darker orange. I think. Am I going over it with you? I can't remember. But I remember just being a bit like frustrated with my shading choices sometimes um it's really like yes straight away it works it's not terrible but it wasn't my favorite color i was a little bit frustrated with it anywho so back to doing details so on this little hat thing i wanted it also to be as if it was embroidered so i'm kind of adding uh random swirls and patterns much well similar to what i do on the coat but actually not uh, slightly differently detailed i wanted some colors in there as well so you'll see me do that in a second and then here we're doing uh i'm doing some details on the trees but like really suggest suggestive not very kind of i'm not really doing kind of tiny leaves or anything leaves 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 and then i grabbed okay so the hair it's not time for the hair so i grabbed the look how pretty this the patterning is you see I um you can see the difference between the ones where I added the shadow and the ones I didn't. I liked I prefer the one with the shadow. I don't know if I finish off doing that anyway. I think I kept it sort of varied. Um but anywho, uh here I'm adding I'm using the India ink from by Windsor Newton from the upgrade box to kind of add black swirly hair. And with that brush again, you see now the soft, the softer brush is helpful. So when you, and it's a thickish brush, so you need to do it for you need to use this one for larger work. It's a nice brush, I really like it, and it came in handy for you know when I'm doing these kind of larger chunks of color. And the softness is okay for this for me as well. So um, you can do really beautiful kind of flowy, flowy brush strokes with a brush like this. I think I'm kind of contemplating, should I leave a part of it more, her hair more yellowy? But in the end, I decide to have a little tiny bit of yellow shine through in certain areas, but mostly I wanted her hair to be black. It is reminiscent again of Klimt. Most of his women, I think, had black hair. Um, and also it just brings it really makes her pop and and makes her f come forward you know pop off the page a bit i am going to sweep so then i did some of tiny tinier um hair strands there so i just used the tip of the brush to kind of bring those thinner lines in and that's a nice contrast right thicker at the top and then thinner at the bottom and it just looks like this it's odd very few people have hair like this so i enjoy, what i enjoy about this is that it is all just a suggestive storytelling piece of art rather than a very literal figurative uh realistic piece of art and, and generally speaking most of you who know me know that i am not someone i sometimes go for realism a little bit i just showed you earlier that the animals that i've been doing are a bit more realistic than I normally do, but I enjoy very much the the kind of paintings that are more um, fantasy based, where the viewer isn't getting an obvious uh, 
story, effectively. So the story is not obvious here. You're going to have to do some work to understand it. And not even, you might not understand it, but what I'm trying to say is you, you're going to be, you're going to ask yourself some questions likely when you see something like this. And I like that. I do that most of the time in my stuff where, you know, I'll do a face, but suddenly there's a star in an eye or there's a duck on a head or <laughs> something strange. You know, the hair is a strange color or the uh, anything. And I, and I like that because it means I am, it's an intrigue. It's an intriguing thing. Some people might not like it. They might want very much, much more obvious. They might much want an obvious image. That's cool. That's fine. Everyone has their preference. But I really like when I see other people's art as well, art, I enjoy it when I have to kind of think about what is happening and, oh, that might mean this, or is there symbolism here? What is going on? I enjoy that very much. And when we're doing this combination of kind of long hair, strange long hair, and a coat, and you can't really see the body shape so well, and that kind of stuff, and the patterning, it, it's, it, it's, uh, for me, it um, generates a lot of intrigue, even though I've made the thing. <laughs> I've made the thing myself. I still go, oh, wow, what does that mean, Tam? Yes. Um, anyway, so you get what I'm saying, I think. And here I'm using that uh, brown pencil to also actually make some more marks. We started off with white, and I'm actually adding some darker marks in the in the coat as well. Mm. Yeah. So I like where it's going. Um, I think we're... Uh, we're kind of nearly there, another five or so minutes uh, of time lapse. I need to do the sky, I need to do more in the sky and the snow. There's not a lot of snowy feel quite yet. I mean, you do, I think you think, I think you'd know that if you had to choose any of the seasons, I think you'd choose winter. I love the patterning now. If I look back on it myself, oh, I remember what I was doing here. I wanted a little bit of shading on the outer uh, coat so that it felt like it was slightly rounded, this, this uh, shape, even though, like, again, climped did it very de deliberately as very two-dimensional. I don't want to do that. I wanted it to have a slightly slightly more of a shape. So she stood um, out from the background. Like again, when you look at Klimt's stuff, a lot of his characters are almost like merged with the background or with the clothing or with the um, blankets or something that he's draping them in. And I do enjoy, I have to say, again, I find this stuff very intriguing and fascinating. But in my case, I wanted to have a slight sort of shadow around the outer edges so that her body popped off the page slightly more. And that's, and again, I like that. And like I said before, I like that thing of taking something from another artist or an idea or an inspirational element and then making it your own by going, actually, I like that, but not that. And I'm going to take it a little, little, you know, you change it so that it's yours or that it's more, more your thing. All right, here I'm grabbing some white acrylics to add some snowy effects to the background and also over the trees in a second and then also in the sky. Just really suggestive. So here we're, we're going for suggestive rather than super detailed, but you get the feel, right? Immediately like, ooh, -hoo, snow time. Sledge time, sledging time. I so have to go on holiday to a snowy place. I love the crisp, fresh air of winter time and just the feel of um, snowstorms. Now, of course, I know that snowstorms, after a while, <laughs> can get a bit annoying and the sleet and all that. But, you know, in the, it's so beautiful, snow. Snow is the, the best. Okay, so not, not quite done yet because the hat still is going to get more details and the sky and the bird and the sun, or the moon, whatever that is, and look, okay, here now I'm doing um, this general patterning on the head, on the hat, rather, it, the hat on the head. Here I'm using an orange Posca pen and a yellow Posca pen to just add some colours to it. In retrospect, I would have enjoyed doing that with acrylics because sometimes I want to get really vibrant little pops of colour. And though the Posca pen is acrylics and it can do that, it's currently kind of fighting with the blue in the background, if you see what I'm saying. The orange isn't as vibrantly orange as I'd love it to be. So I could have used um, sort of heavy body acrylics to get these really the pops of colour, you know, really stand out. Um, and that's the other thing. I want to soon, I'm going to do a bit more critics work. And lately, this year has been my year of watercolor, really. I've really kind of 
uh, giving myself over to watercolor and poor acrylics has felt ignored. And I want to go come back to it and kind of create pieces of art like this with the patterning, um, but then use do it all in acrylics and see how see what that does, you know. So here is the the hats now got a bit more detail and interesting sort of again the kind of patterning and swirlies and little twiddly biddly bits. And then now we're making it snow in the sky. Very cool. Snow in the sky. I think she's so regal. I like how regal she is. And this yellow. I feel like I should have used the yellow that was on her coat. Because this is an odd yellow. Almost a greeny yellow. There's some, some things that I would have changed about this page. But I mean, I'm like 85, 90% happy with it. There's a couple of bits that I regret doing or you know could have done a bit more of or less of but overall I like it um yeah snowy snowy winter walking in a winter wonderland okay some fine some finalizing the face here a little bit adding some eyelashes and um what else are we doing A little bit of like hair, like little hair strands. So a couple of doodles on the face. Nice. And we're going to do the birdie, I'm sure. Yep. There's a little swallow. I only did one. I'd consider doing three. But then I thought, no, no, let's just keep it at one. Stick with one. And so I'm just colouring this one in with black. Yeah, so we're nearly there now. Nearly finished with the page. Just adding some final details again as usual, doing some butterfly wings, little do little doodles, little doodles, little lines, little details. Um, and in a moment I know I think I'm gonna add some snow to her hair as well. For effect. So here we go, yeah. So I'm adding some final little twinkles, twinklies, snow. Basically it's meant to be snow, to her hair, as if and in a her in the fur, you know, as if it's falling on her hair like a sparkle. Which is really nice, I think. And then I also decided to actually draw a bit of a, a large snowflake in her hair on the other side. You'll see that in a second. But you see, that yellow in the sky, that sun, that color needs to be different, I think. That yellow isn't quite the yellow that fits. I think I should have done it the same yellow as the coat. That would have worked better. Now it looks, it feels like a green yellow. And I don't like that. Anyway, small detail, but I can, fi I can still fix that, no problem. Yeah, so anyway, nearly done now. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me create this page and listen to me with her. <laughs> um, and if you did like it, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet and leaving me a little like. You can also press the bell and then every time I post a video, you will be notified that I have. So yeah, so that'd be very, very nice if you did um, at least put a, a thumbs up. That's so uh, helpful for us as artists because it gets um, our channel seen more. So you help us grow our business and our channel if you do that. Thank you very much. So thank you for being here today and listen to, uh, like I said, to me with her <laughs> and watch me create this uh, journal page. I'm always really grateful for anyone who comes and watches my videos or joins any of my classes. Um, you can find out more about me on www.willowing.org. My Instagram is at willowing. And I am on Facebook also as um, well, Tamara Laporte, but also at Willowing Art, Willowing dot Arts, I think is my fan page, they call it. But below in the description, you will find all the necessary links. And then maybe we can hang out a bit more in other places. I'm hoping next year in 2023 to do, I'm trying to set myself up for lives. And I'll do them, and I want to do them so that I can run them both on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Apparently you can do that, um, but I need to figure out how. Okay, thank you again for being here today and watching my video. I really appreciate it. You are loved. And um, yeah, have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you around on all the social medias. <laughs> okay, much love. Bye. Bye.